Hello, my name is Professor Matthew Schmidt and I'd like to welcome you to genetics. In this session we're going to talk again about linkage and gene mapping, but specifically we're going to speak about the so-called chi-square test, a test that measures goodness of fit, which is a concept we'll explain well right now. So the real idea of this is We've seen situations where genes are not linked. We've seen situations where they're clearly linked, but we need some kind of statistical method of determining based on given data sets if two uh, loci are in fact linked because sometimes it's not 100% clear. So as I say here, sometimes it's obvious and those are the times that we've been looking at, but sometimes it's not. And you may be given questions asking simply, uh, are these two loci linked based on on this data? Well, the chi-square test, and we should get one thing out of the way right right away. The the Greek letter chi superficially resembles an X. Okay, so here's what it looks like if it's drawn out. In fact, you may remember the word chiasma that we used. It actually is the word meant because it looks like an X. So often this chi versus X, but you don't want to call this the X-square test. And also, I've heard people call it the chi, the chi-square test. No good. So it's chi-square, but just the, remember that chi looks superficially like an X. So the question we're asking here is, given data, how would one determine if two loci are in fact linked? So the chi-square test is one method of determining, and what it really determines is how closely predictions correlate with results because as we're going to see if you make a hypothesis that two genes are unlinked you can say okay if that's the case then this is what we should observe and then you compare that with what you actually do observe and we put it into this fancy looking formula it looks a lot fancier than it really is here though in the green box that is the chi-square formula so chi squared equals this is the Greek letter sigma. Sigma, you may know, is used to denote the sum. So it's the sum of, and we'll do this, but the observed minus the expected, that number, because it's in parentheses, squared, that's where the squared and the chi-squared comes from, and then you're going to add up all those depending how many classes there are, and divide it by the expected. So some people will make you memorize that chi-square equation. Some will provide it for you. It's not that, once you understand the concept, it's not that bad, but it's sigma, parentheses, observed minus expected, and parentheses squared, divided by E. When we actually do it, it, it should make more sense, okay? If it doesn't already. All right, so in other words, here's the situation, and I kept the formula on the top there just so we can refer to it uh, if we haven't memorized it yet. So we've got a cross, and the cross is big A, little a, big B, little b, times little a, little a, little b, little b. This is of the form of that we've done recently. So our hypothesis is going to be a null hypothesis, which basically means we're not we're saying that the genes are unlinked nothing's going on that's the hypothesis and if they are not linked if you do this the we've done it so many times before we really don't need to do it again if you do a punnett square though if you if you're not convinced we should see a 1 to 1 to 1 to 1 ratio if they are not linked okay so in other words say we counted 500 offspring we would expect 125 of each type, because remember, if they're unlinked, independent assortment is what's going on. And in theory, we should see mixing and matching. We should see all types. So big A, big B, little a, big B, big A, little b, and little a, little b. And that's our shorthand for phenotype, remember. So in other words, we know in real life you never see the exact numbers. But just to illustrate the point, I'm going to say when the expectations equal exactly the observations, we'll see what's going to happen. And then we'll see what happens when those observations deviate a little bit more from the expectations. All right? So here's, this isn't actual data, it's, but I'm saying it's actual data. It's data I've made up to illustrate this point. So we just said that we expect out of a total of 500 offspring that we're going to count, 
exactly one quarter of each type, 125, right? And if, in fact, unlikely as it may be, we observed exactly that, that would, well, that would mean that our predictions or expectations were exactly correct in the real world. That's what we observed, exactly what we predicted. So if you look at the formula, just plug in the numbers here. So what is chi-square equal to? And let's, the math down here looks intimidating, but you'll realize that it's very, very simple after we go through it. But I want to go through it because I want you to understand, if you don't already, how these parentheses fit into things up here. Okay? So what I'm saying is there are four classes here, right? In other words, we're dealing with four pieces of data, if you will. Uh, and that means we're going to have four numbers in that box. We're going to square each of them, and we're going to take the sum of those four. So in other words, it, they're all the same. It's redundant, but we have to do it this way. So for class one, look what we want to do. Observed minus expected. Well, observed is here minus expected. It's 125 minus 125. Obviously, that's zero, and zero squared is zero, right? So we got a big zero there. Then we are going to divide that by 125. I may have misspoken a little bit earlier. The sigma applies, really we should put another part in here. It applies to the, the sum of the entire expression for each one of the classes. I apologize about that. But if you follow down the bottom, you'll understand exactly what, what's going on here. So. 0 squared is 0, and 0 divided by 125 is obviously 0. Now, you can go through every single one of these. We're adding them all together, but they're all going to be zeros. And you can see down here that obviously 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 equals 0. Now, this is an idealized situation, but we end up with a chi-square value of 0. So the only way to interpret this type of data is that you have to be provided with a so-called chi-square value table. So let's take a look at that and understand what it means. So here's a table of what they call critical chi-square values. You'll see something like this if it's not exactly like this. Now, it's somewhat arbitrary, but this is what's been agreed on by everyone, I guess. This right here is a very important line. Sorry, mine's not exactly straight. The null hypothesis is the one that we just made, which is that these genes are unlinked. By the way, this can be used, I said, in all sorts of ways, but in genetics, this is mainly the way that it's used. So in other words, they're saying this. If you get a chi-square value that falls on this side of the line, and the line represents, by the way, a 5% probability that this deviation occurs due to random chance, in other words, just for no particular reason. It's basically set, and what's been agreed upon is that if it's less than 5%, then we're, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. Guys, it's possible that this is incorrect, but this is the accepted wisdom, and it, it's going to be this way if you're asked to solve it. If the chi-square value falls on this side of that line, well, we don't reject the null hypothesis, which is not identical, but pretty much the same as saying that we accept it. We accept that these genes are unlinked, right? Now, in the case we just saw, they were on, we postulated that they were unlinked. And what chi-square value did we get? First of all, the degrees of freedom is the number of classes minus one. We had four classes, so we're looking at degrees of freedom. And all the problems in this set, the degrees of freedom will be three. But that's not always the case, so be careful. It's always the number of data values that you have minus 1. So we're interested only in this area over here. Now, 0, they don't even bother writing because it almost never happens. But up here, in other words, what they're saying is it's 99% or greater chance that the deviation we saw we didn't actually even see any deviation, but in other words, the no deviation that we saw, it's almost...